Today, we're gonna to be talking about Elementor Flexbox containers. They're new, they're sleek, they're different, and they're really easy to use once you get the hang of it. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to activate them, how to convert your old website segments into the new containers, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to use them. Flexbox containers are a different layout structure that Elementor has rolled out, and it's gonna completely change the way that you customize websites for yourself, as well as for clients. Now, every time you open up Elementor, you're gonna be prompted to give these containers a try, and I recommend that you do. Even if you decide not to use them, and stick to the old way of editing a website using your sections, your columns, your widgets, it's still gonna be wise that you at least understand how they work. Now, if you wanna get started using Flexbox containers, I'm gonna cover two ways of activating them. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, there's two different ways that we can get started activating Elementor's Flexbox containers. The first would be to just open up Elementor on a brand new site, and you might see a pop-up prompting you to give them a try, and you'll see it right here. If you decide to activate it here, you'll be taken to Elementor settings where you can make the change. If for some reason this pop-up doesn't display Display, that's totally fine. From your WordPress dashboard, you're gonna wanna go to Elementor here on the left-hand side. Now that's obviously assuming that you already have Elementor downloaded. And then from there, you're gonna go into the settings tab, and then you're gonna wanna click on features. And from here, you'll be able to see the toggle switch that allows you to activate Flexbox containers right here. All right, so now you have Flexbox containers activated on your website. But let's just assume that you already have a website built and you're not starting from scratch. There's no need to worry. You're able to convert every single section on your current website into the new container format and it's really easy to do. All you have to do is edit the section and then in the top left corner, you'll see the new convert button where you can apply the Flexbox container changes to that section. Elementor will then automatically convert each section that you've built into a new container layout. Most of the time it works great, but sometimes you'll have to make some small fixes converting if you have a section that's a bit special. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys how to use it in just a second. One by one, you're gonna wanna convert each one of your sections as you move through your website. And every time you convert a section, Elementor is gonna create a duplicate rather than just overriding your work. The top section will be the old section with the sections, the columns, and the widgets, and the bottom section will be the new converted section with the container layout. If you're still not sure about using Flexbox containers on your website, you can always download a backup of your website using an old version, or you can even save the entire web page that you're editing as a template inside of Elementor before making any changes. And then after making a backup of your website's old version or downloading the template inside of Elementor, you can start converting each section one by one and deleting the top one. Simple as that. All right, so let's move on to the third part of the video, which is showing you guys how Flexbox containers work. They make things really simple and they're really easy to use, you just have to avoid overcomplicating things. Especially if you're already very familiar with using Elementor with its sections, columns, and widgets. You no longer have to worry about widgets stacking vertically and columns stacking horizontally in order to get the results that you want. Instead, now all you have to do is add a new section, which is also conveniently called a container, and then you can place containers inside of the first container. Before we get started, be sure to actually open your navigator by clicking down here in the bottom left corner. Your navigator is gonna allow you to have a much clearer image of what you're trying to do here. And I know what you're thinking, I don't ever use the Elementor Navigator when I build websites, but when I use Flexbox containers, I do. Okay, so we're inside of Elementor and we have the Navigator open on the right-hand side. Now you'll notice that there's only two containers on my screen. And so before I actually get into this, let me go ahead and just explain what containers are and how they work. So containers inside of Elementor basically take the same place as sections and columns. So now instead of saying a section and a column, you're just gonna say container and container, if that makes sense. So let's take a look at this section right here. Now, for those of you obviously who are familiar with Elementor, you would know that if you hover your mouse over the six dots up here, you're editing a section, but right now what it says is edit container. And so if I go down here as well to this section and I hover my mouse on the six dots, you'll see that it also says edit container. And so now what you'll notice is that section has been replaced with container. So you'll see that I only have two sections on this website, one and two. And so over here, we've got only two containers. Now, if I click on the first container, so now I'm editing this one, you'll notice that if I click on the drop down, there's only a heading widget inside. So if I click over here, you'll notice that there's the container, which is the section container. Let me just say that so it's easier for you to understand. So we've got the container, that's the section. And then inside of that, all I did was place a widget. Now, what you would used to have to do is actually add a column and then you could add a widget. But now you can literally just add a widget into a container. And so what I'm trying to get you to understand is a container can hold anything. So a container can hold widgets and a container can hold containers. So the section is now a container. And then I can also place a container inside of a container. So if we look at the second container down below, this is my section. If I open it up, I have a container inside, which is acting as my column. And then inside of that, I've got all of these icon widgets, as you can see, right? And so this one's pretty similar. If you guys know how to use Elementor, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, this looks normal. We've got the section 
and then inside that we have the column, and then inside that we have the widgets. But they're no longer called sections and columns because they don't act mutually exclusive to each other. They're basically the same thing. This is a container and this is a container. And you can put widgets, like an icon for instance, inside of any container you want. So that means that I no longer essentially have to have a column up on this side, as you can see, because it's literally, I'm just editing the section and then I put a widget inside, which makes things much easier, much more condensed. It's gonna speed up your website. Elementor is saying that this is gonna optimize how your website flows. And so you're getting rid of a bunch of useless clutter. So it's gonna make your site run faster. So that's a plus as well. So now that you guys have an understanding of how this website websites laid out, you know, we've got one section container and inside that I've got a widget. And then I also wanted to give the example of having a container inside of a container. But also let me show you guys, we can go ahead and open up the Rubik's cube icon. I can put as many containers inside of a container as I want. So if I take a container and I put it down here, so now there's a container inside of this container, which is inside of this container. And then if I want to, I can even add another container inside of this one. And then I can go over here and add another container inside of this one. And so you can nest as many containers inside of a container as you want. As long as you remember that the main section is also a container, basically the, your imagination is the limit or the sky is the limit. You can put as many containers inside as you want. So let me go ahead and delete these. And then we're gonna go over the actual layout options that containers now provide, which is pretty cool. Cool. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna click on update to save my work. And then from here, I'm actually gonna close out of the navigator so that you guys are just focusing on what I'm doing here. We're not actually gonna touch this spot up here. I only want to edit this bottom area. So what we have right now is a section or a container. And inside of this container, I have a column, which is another container. And then this container has all my widgets inside. So what I'm gonna do is if I ever wanna change the layout of something, I want to go to the container that is containing that item. So I'm gonna click on this container right here if I wanna change the layout of these items. So the first thing you're going to notice is over here on the left hand side, we've got all of these new options that we can click on. We've got things like the minimum height and width, which those really apply technically to the section container. So if I click on the container up here, this container, now I can basically just change the height of my container by just dragging the slider. And I can also change the width and things like that. You still have the box in full width right here, right? And then we still have all of these extra new options. So I'm going to click back on this container because I want to be editing these items, right? Okay. So let's just go ahead and go down the list. The first thing we we have under the items tab right here is direction. And you guessed it, you're basically deciding which direction your content is going to be listed out. And so you've got the first one is called row, which to be honest, I just say right, down, left, or up to be honest, but you've got row, column, reverse row, and reverse column, <laughs> which is a little more confusing, but you guessed it. If I click on row or the right side, which I'm just gonna call it right, it's gonna align things to the right. And the reason that I put all of these icons with different colors is to show you direction because I made this one red and then this one's a little bit lighter red, lighter, 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 until it becomes white. Cause I wanted to show you guys, for instance, if I go to container, I have it set to go to the right, but what if I click on the left or the reverse? Well, now my red is over here and white goes into the center, as you can see. So if I go back and forth, you'll see that I'm literally changing the direction. Hint, there's direction right there. I'm literally changing the direction of my content. And then the same thing applies with changing it to column or down. So now it's pointing down and then I can also do the reverse and now it's pointing up. So you guys get the idea. If I click between these two, you can see that it literally just reverses the content. So it's either vertical or horizontal, it's that simple. So that's direction. You can also unclick. So right now the right is highlighted. If I unclick it, it's gonna go back to default, which looks like it's the vertical. So what I can also do is I can justify my content and I can align my items. And so you can basically think of this as vertical and horizontal alignment, that's it. And the pictures literally tell you what it's gonna do. So this icon, you can see it's gonna be the top, which by default it's on the top, so nothing happened. I've got center and bottom, center, top, center, bottom, pretty easy. This one is space in between, so it's going to space them out with an equal amount of space in between each object. This one is space around, so it's going to perfectly space around the object. So maybe if you had different pictures, different sizes, it would perfectly space them around. These are all spaced evenly between the top and the bottom of this column. So again, it's just vertical alignment. That's all this is. We've got the top, middle, bottom, and then we can choose to space them perfectly between themselves, between evenly from the top and bottom and around, which basically means anything surrounding it. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna go back to top. And then we also have the horizontal alignment. As you can see, this would probably be left, this would probably be right, and that's center. So left, right, center. 
And then you also have stretch, left, right, and center. So for instance, if I want my icons to be perfectly sideways like this, right here in the center, then I would probably say I want it to be row, center justify, and center align. And now all of a sudden, I put all of my widgets directly in the center of this section. Do you guys see the power and capability that this has? I mean, it's fantastic. Now, instead of having to go into my columns, add padding, and then, you know, click on each individual widget, go over to content, and centering it, and then click on this one, going to the content and centering it and then click on this one and go to the content and center it. You guys get the idea. Now all I have to do is go to my column and I can literally move my items around wherever I want to. I can space them evenly, I can move them over and I can put them center center or maybe I want them in the bottom right and that's pretty easy to do or maybe I just want them centered or let's say space between at the bottom or in the center or at the top. You guys get the idea. So all it is is layout. That's the only thing that's changed with the Flexbox containers, but it does give you a lot of control, which is pretty cool. So now let's say I put it center and center. So now it's right here. I can also choose the gap between my elements. So maybe you don't want it spaced perfectly between where it spans like the entire column. Maybe you just want a little bit of extra space and you can do that. If I go back to center, I can come over here to gap between my elements and I literally have a slider where I can choose the exact amount of space I want between these. I mean, it's just ridiculous how powerful this is. So another thing you can do is what if I actually gap my elements past the bounds of my container right here. So now they're overlapping to the outside of the container. Well, you also have a wrap function, which is pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna wrap it to the bottom. So if I click on wrap, now it's gonna wrap it and center it at the same time. And then maybe I wanna wrap it and have it centered to the left. So now it continues. And as you can see, it's going from red to white, continues and goes all the way to white, right? And if I go center, same thing all the way, and it just wraps it continuing to white as you can see. So these are all of the new options that you have available here. You've got wrap or no wrap, which no wrap is the same thing as just completely deselecting it. I can leave it on no or deselect it. So not sure why that's there, but we can wrap it or we don't. Or of course you could just remove the gap between the elements and now there's no point in wrapping it because nothing's gonna happen as you can see. So those are the basic functions that you have. Uh, let me go ahead and delete the gap. There we go. So those are the basic functions that you have inside of the layout tab when you're using containers. I mean, it makes redesigning the layout of your website so much easier, especially if you're building websites on a daily basis for clients. This is a huge time saver rather than having to come in here and update different parts of the website when your client calls you to make a change to a section. All you gotta do is just click on the container and you can move things around. It's so much easier. Now there's one last thing that I wanna show you guys and that's gonna be the advanced tab. Well, excuse me, there's two more things that we have to show you because I also wanna show you guys what happens when you create a new section. But for now, let's go to the advanced tab. So under the advanced tab, you also have a few more options right here. We've got align self, order and size. Now align self is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna align, as you can see, top, center and bottom and stretch. So it's basically the same thing as align items, but you're aligning the container itself. As you can see, you're aligning the self. So now instead of moving my widgets to the top, I'm literally going to crunch the container to the top. So watch this, boom. Now my container is crunched to the top. Let me deselect it, now it's the full width. If I choose center, it's gonna crunch my container into the center. And the same thing for bottom as well, right? I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that. So instead of moving my widgets, as you can see here, if I go to the top, they still have all of the individual widget boxes, right? So if I wanna move my widgets, I would do it under the layout tab, right? So they're moving inside of this big square. And if I wanna move the square itself, you can go to the advanced tab and move it itself, as you can see. Now order basically takes control of when the container is going to be displayed. So let's just show you really quickly. I'm gonna add a new container. So now there's, as you can see, these containers kind of act like columns, right? Cause I've got two of them, two columns inside of a section. But now this container, let's just say I want this container to be displayed last. Well, I can go to the advanced tab and just say under order. And now it's the last container that's being displayed or I can choose front or I can just leave it at default, right? All right, and the last thing that we have is size, which you can basically choose grow or shrink. And when you click on grow, it's basically gonna expand the container to take up the whole space and kind of collapse the other one into this weird shrink area. I rarely ever use size, but you do have it as an option if you want it. Let me show you what happens if I click on this container and I click on size when you grow, as you can see, it's gonna compress the other container and basically take up like 90% of the width and it gives like 10% over here to this side. So that's the grow and the shrink as well, which isn't gonna do anything to this right now because there's nothing in here. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you guys how to do is 
adding a new section. And it's gonna make a lot more sense now that you guys have actually played around with all of the layout controls of each container. So you guys know how to use all this already. So when I click on this plus button right here, or let me do it above so it's actually like right here in the middle. When I come up here and try to add a new section, You'll see that right off the bat, we've got a bunch of different structures because what we used to have was one, two, three, four, five, six columns and then special sections down below. So there were sections with columns. Now these are just singular containers with containers inside of them. You can either choose to have a single section container with the direction automatically facing down or facing to the right. So essentially if I was gonna do the same thing as this container right here, I would either have them down, which would make this happen, let's say down. And so if I click right here, by default, all of my content it's gonna stack vertically. Or I could click on the right, and that means that by default, all of my content would stack horizontally to the right. So that's what these two mean. So for instance, if I click on this one and I start adding widgets, so let's just start adding, I don't know, buttons, just so that you have these little rectangles here. So if I add a button and then I add another button, you'll see they stack vertically like this inside. But if I do the same thing, add a section, and then I choose to go horizontal, you'll see that as I place widgets, I'll place an icon, it's gonna stack horizontally. So now, instead of having extra space below, I don't. So if I try to add another icon, it's gonna want me to place it to the side if it wants to work with me here. You see that? There we go. So now I can stack them horizontally. So that's the difference between those two. And then as you can see, the rest of them are just how many containers you want inside. So this is one container with a certain direction, one container with a certain direction. And then the rest of these are multiple containers with different layouts. So if I click on this one, you'll see I've got all of these containers in this specific layout. So you guys can of course put in widgets over here, pictures, text, and things like that. So it's kind of similar to what it used to be where you can have different layouts of columns and sections, but now they're just containers. And that's pretty much how containers work inside of the new Elementor update. All right, so now that you have a better understanding of how to use Flexbox containers, let's go ahead and try building some sections of a website together for some practice. I'm gonna help you guys build a hero section, an about section, and a services section for an example website that you can see using Flexbox containers in action. So what you're gonna find is that building a website with Flexbox containers is pretty much the same thing as building a website with sections, columns, and widgets. The only thing that changes is just how you can arrange the layout and it's pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do for my hero section is I'm gonna have like text centered. All of my widgets are gonna be centered and just move down. So what I'm gonna do is choose the new, I think this is column. Yep, direction column, which is basically direction down in my opinion. I think that's just so much easier saying right, down, left, and up. So from here, what we can do is we can automatically set a minimum height. And so I might just make my hero section look something like this. And from here, I can choose to have it boxed or full width. Let's try sticking a boxed for now and if I decide later that everything looks crunched, I might change that. But from here, all I gotta do is click on the plus button and I can start adding in all of my widgets. So let me go ahead and do that for you guys in fast motion. All right, so now I've got all my widgets on here and you'll notice that this doesn't look anything like a beautiful hero section, but with a container, that's so much easier. So now what used to be my section and I have no column whatsoever, no other container, just one container. All I gotta do is come over here and I can say, justify my content to the center and align it to the center. And just like that, my hero section is like 80% done. It's ridiculous how easy it is to use containers now. Before using containers, I'd have to come in here, click on this text, center it, click on this text, center it, move this one over, center it, do this, center, this, center. And then I have to click on edit section like this. I have to come over here and I have to change my vertical align and my horizontal align to middle and middle. And all of that can be saved by just going to one setting right here, justify and align. One, two, done. And there's my hero section. I'm, uh, you can't tell by the audio, but I am smiling through my teeth right now because this just looks so much easier. So from here, we can go ahead and just add some text and we'll edit this one as well. And then if we wanted to, we can come in here and add some text, but honestly, I don't have any text to add. So I'm just gonna kind of copy some of the center here and then just paste it to make it look like I added a paragraph. Now you'll notice that for some reason, the text editor didn't center, even though everything else is moved into the center and the widget itself is centered. And so what I will do is have to go and change the alignment manually one time. Still so much easier than having to change all of them, but you guys get the idea. I had to change the alignment. So there's my little uh, intro blurb there. I might actually click on my heading widget and I'm gonna increase the typography size 
just to make it kind of bigger. So something like this, digital marketing services. And then I can click on my divider and I can also center it. And the only reason I had to center it is because if I move the width, you'll see it's still moving to the left, even though it is still centered inside of my section rather than being up here in the top left corner. So similar to the text section, I'll actually have to change the alignment like this. And I'll probably shrink it a little bit more. And then I'll also add some weight, maybe not that thick. There we go. And then from here, I can also edit the button just by clicking on it. Schedule an appointment, so something like this. Okay, so my hero section's looking pretty good so far. One last change that I'm gonna use my Flexbox container to do. So we already have the direction set to down, because obviously if I set it to row, it's gonna stack everything horizontally, as you can see, so we'll leave it on row. I could change the direction if I wanted to, which looks terrible, but I could do it. But we've already got the direction, we've already got the justify to the center, and the aligning to the center, which is vertical and horizontal centering. But I'm also gonna add some gap. So maybe just a little bit, so something like this. That way they're not crunched together, you know? So something a little bit more breathable, perfect. Click on update, and that's how fast you can create a hero section. Oh, and the last thing is I'll probably go to the style tab of the same container I've been editing this whole time and just add a background image. So let's add something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and make the position center so it's focused on the center of the image. And then I'm going to set the display size to cover. So it basically just perfectly stretches it to the background. And to be honest, I want it just a little bit brighter. So I'll probably just add a background overlay of white. And there we go. That was pretty easy. I mean, I just built a hero section in, you know, just a couple of minutes and even fewer clicks because of the Flexbox container. So you guys already get the idea of how powerful these things can be. I am just loving this. So from here, we can move on and create a about section. And so we'll click on the plus button. And for the about section, I'm thinking about having text over on this side and then a picture of the guy, you know, Daniel Smith on this side. And so for that, I'm gonna click on this structure right here. And I've got two perfect columns side by side. And so what I'm gonna do is first obviously change the minimum height to be a little bit bigger and then I can come over here and add all of my widgets so I'll do that quickly for you guys all right so I've added all of those then I also need to put an image on the right hand side so I can throw this guy over here and I can go ahead and choose my image and I'll go ahead and upload all of the files that I have for my computer except for this one because I already uploaded it all right, and I can choose my about image. So there's my guy looking all handsome and everything. And now all I have to do is use my Flexbox containers to make everything look a little bit better. So first, let's actually change the text here because that's going to bother me. All right, so I've got some dummy text. I've got this and the button, which also will probably just say something like learn more. Okay, so learn more. Perfect. So now all I have to do is just use my Flexbox containers to make everything look perfectly centered. So I'll click on this container because I want to affect these three items. I wouldn't click on this one because then I would only be affecting the two containers. For instance, let me show you guys the difference. You want, if I want to change the orientation of these three items, I have to go to the container holding them. If I want to change the orientation of these two containers, I have to go to the container that's holding both of them, right? So if I edit the section or this big container and I change it to column, you'll see that it took this column and put it on top of this column, right? And I'm going to set it back to row. Now, if I edit this container and I change it to column or row, you'll see that I'm only affecting the information that's inside of that container, right? So if I want to edit this text here and everything, I'm going to come over here and say justify to the center and center. And now I've got something that looks along the lines of this, but actually I don't want it centered in terms of horizontal. I actually want it to the left. So that looks pretty good. And then over here, I've got my image. So let's go over to my container. And again, we're gonna justify it to the center and maybe to the end on that side, but you can't tell because it's not really going anywhere. So I could center it too. And if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of a gap between my items over here, but honestly, it just moves my title and my button away from the text. So I don't think I'm gonna add too much, if any. I think it looks fine just like this. And finally, if you really want to, you could add a little bit of space in between the two by either going to the main container and I could change this to full width, right? And then I could just add some padding on the inside, which makes my picture bigger, or I could leave it boxed and then I could just add some padding on the inside of the text in the image. So I might go to this container first, add a little bit of padding on the right. Let's try 50. And then maybe I'll also go to this container and add a little bit of padding on the left something like this. You guys get the idea. All I had to do was just change the alignment, put some widgets in here, and I've got a pretty minimalistic looking about section. So that's pretty cool. So from here, I think that looks just fine. We can move on to the services section, which is also gonna be just as simple with these Flexbox containers. So what I'm gonna do is click here and I want to add three sections basically, but you'll notice that there's only two. 
And to fix this, it's really simple. Just click on the two, and then I can just right click and say, add a new container. And now I've got my three, which isn't a perfect size. And so what you'll notice is if I click here, it basically created this one, but it put the big one on the right. And so if you wanna change the width of your container, it's pretty similar to changing the width of your column back in the old version of Elementor. Literally, you just click on your container and you've got a slider to change how big you want it. It's really easy. Or you can just set it to 33 and you could set this one to 33 and you could set this one to 33, which because I'm lazy and not wanting to put decimals, 33 plus 33 plus 33 is 99. So you're, it's almost 100% of the width, whatever. It's a little imperfect. You can go in there and actually put your percentages if you guys want to, but I'm not going to. Okay, so I've got these taking up 33, 33 and 33 and now they're perfectly centered and I've got my three columns, right? And so from here, here, all I have to do is add my widgets. So I'll see you guys in a second. Let me do that. All right. And then from here, I can add my image. So let's just go ahead and put this one in. And then I can go ahead and add my text. So web services, for example, I'm just kind of thinking of something off the top of my head and then I've got a little blurb about it. And so now what I can do is, I know I just created these two columns, but I'm gonna duplicate this entire container. I keep saying columns because that's what I'm used to, but I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this container. So I have to delete these if I wanna duplicate. So let's go ahead and delete these two and I'm gonna duplicate this one and then duplicate it again, which saves me a lot of time of having to add more images, more text and more headings. Now all I have to do is just switch the text and the picture, just like that. And so now I've got my three services. So maybe this is something like social media, social media marketing. And then maybe this one is, I don't know. Let's just think of an example here. Email marketing, there we go. All right, so now I've got my three services here. So something that I can also do, everything's perfectly centered and I like that, but what I could do is go over to my container that holds all three and I could add some space between them. And it's literally as simple as just dragging this slider so I can add a little bit of space just like this. What I used to have to do is add a bunch of padding and margins to both sides, but now there's literally a slider for it and it's the easiest thing in the world. So let's do something like this. That way they're not cramped together like this. It feels too cluttered and unbreathable. So now it's a little bit of breathing room. And then on top of that, I can add some more spacing in between all three of these as well by just clicking on the container and just adding a gap between elements. I can't tell you how nice it is having this slider gap between elements to be able to just quickly add space equally between three different elements inside of a container, right? So I could do the same thing. I could add whatever spacing I want. I'd probably want to match it up. So if I add 10 to this one, then I'd probably want to add 10 to this one and then also 10 to that one so that they don't look janky or anything like that. But you guys get the idea. I can go to this container, add 10 and you guys get the idea. As is everything else inside of Elementor, Flexbox containers are also mobile responsive. That means that once you're done building your website on the desktop view, it's important to go back to the tablet view and the mobile view as well, because your website is gonna look different on different screen sizes. In the same way that you would edit the mobile responsive versions of any other website, you're gonna open up the mobile responsive ribbon inside of Elementor, and you can make the same changes that you do on the desktop view to your other responsive views. All right, and so those of you guys who are familiar with Elementor, you should already know the drill. We're going to go down here to the bottom left corner and we've got responsive modes. And then we've got the ribbon up on top that allows us to see the desktop view, the tablet view, and the mobile view. And so the mobile view, because we built this from scratch, is probably going to look the worst. The tablet view actually doesn't look that bad. I'm kind of impressed that everything compressed pretty well. And then obviously the desktop view is what we just created, so it looks the best. So what we can do is start with the tablet view right here and we'll scroll up to the top. And the first thing that I wanna do is just double check that everything's centered. So I'm gonna go into my container right here and make sure that yes, it looks like everything is still centered, but my text is over here on the left. So what I'm gonna do is just click on it and individually change the alignment to be center. And that looks pretty good. Now, what I could also do if I wanted to is go to the style tab under typography and I could reduce the size so that it looks a little bit more manageable rather than having three lines of text look terrible. Maybe I want two lines or one line even. So maybe I want something like this, digital marketing services. And then I'll just click on the top one, go to the style tab and reduce the size a little bit more. And you'll notice that anything that has that icon on top means that I'm only editing the tablet version. So if I go over to the desktop view, everything is still the same. And so from here, you can see that the hero section looks fine. So I could come to the about section here. And what I can do is just, you'll notice that on different responsive modes, if you just change the text size, half the time things are gonna work out. As you can see up here, I just centered it and changed the text size and it looks fantastic. Same thing down here. I mean, let me go ahead and just do that really quickly. Go to the style tab and I can just reduce the size to something manageable. So something like 20. Let me go ahead and copy that to the other two really quickly. So I'll go to size and type in 20. And as you can see, again, we've got that tablet view, which means it's it's not changing the text sizes on any of the other responsive modes. Let's do the same thing on this one. We'll go to the typography and type in 20. 
and these look good. The only thing that I could do is click on the section right here. And remember how I added a gap in between all of my elements? You'll also notice that Flexbox containers allows that to be mobile responsive as well. So on the desktop version, I'm going to have a 77 gap, but on the tablet version, I'm going to reduce that gap severely. I'm going to come down to like here. So I've got 15, but if I go back to desktop, it's at 77. So even Flexbox containers are going to be mobile responsive, which makes things so easy. I mean, you saw that that was just one change. Well, two changes because I had to change the text and then I changed the spacing, but two changes and that section's done. Another two changes and this was done. You know, we changed the text size and the alignment and then the text size of that one as well. So then let's come down to this one. And if you guys remember, we just added padding on the insides of these. So I could just go here and I bet this is going to fix it. Let's go ahead and just zero it out really quickly. And we can zero this one out as well. And I think that looks fine. Maybe we'll leave a little bit of padding on the left-hand side of this one because that doesn't look very good. So let's do like 20 or something like that. That way it's away from the text. And then if I wanted to, I could also reduce the size of this one just a little bit. So something like that. I could even do that to this. So on the tablet version, the text is going to be a little bit smaller. Now, obviously we don't want it so small like this where it's like hard to read, but I also don't need it to be as big as it was. Maybe I bring it down just one or two. All right, so that's the tablet view. Let's just hit up that mobile view really quickly. And you'll actually notice that making a few changes kind have made the mobile version a little bit easier to see, but let's go ahead and just make the final changes. We'll go over here to the heading. And again, if you want, we can change this to be instead of a triple line, you could just reduce the size and make it a double or a single if you want to. I think the double is actually going to be big enough where it's kind of worth making it a double. There we go. And then we can change the text size of this one to be a little bit smaller just so that it looks like a subtitle. Okay, so it went to zero for some reason. So something like this. The text size is fine and all of that is fine. In the about section, maybe on the mobile version, I want to add a little bit of padding around the whole thing. So maybe around everything, I kind of space it out a little bit. That was pretty easy. Come down to the about section. Now check this out. This is where we're going to do something again that's unique to Flexbox containers. First, let me just remove that padding uh, on the left-hand side, as you can see. Also container, I think we moved it to the right, didn't we? No, it's centered. So maybe the image doesn't have padding. Maybe it's the container. Yep, there it is. Okay, so the container has padding. We're gonna zero that out really quickly and now it's centered. Okay, so with that out of the way, I actually want my picture on top in the mobile version. And that's really easy to do. Again, remember, we just click on the six dots right here, go to the advanced tab, and do you guys remember the order? It's responsive as well. So if I change the order on mobile, it's not gonna change the tablet and desktop versions. So, because for instance, if on the desktop version, I changed the order of this to be like this, we're not editing the top we actually need to edit the actual column. So if I edited the actual column and said I want it on the front, it'd look backwards, which I don't like this. I like it as the default, but that's okay because it's mobile responsive. So on the cell phone version, I'm actually just gonna bring this to the top by changing the order to start. And so now my picture is the first thing you see. And I don't know why, but on the mobile version, I think that just looks correct. As you scroll on down, the picture's first and then you have the about text. So that looks pretty good. And it's really easy to do. We just change the order with the new Flexbox container. So that's cool. And then finally, Finally, we have the services section, which as you can see, all of my services just stacked perfectly. So there's really no changes needed here. And with that, we fixed all of the mobile responsive versions with the Flexbox containers, and it was a lot easier than usual. So that was pretty cool. I'm gonna click on update to save my work. Flexbox containers are a real game changer, and I'm loving the way the site is looking. Now, what if we wanna keep adding things to the website we just built, but we don't wanna do everything from scratch? Well, you could check out this video right here where I go over one of the biggest time hacks that you can do when adding new sections to your website. I'll see you guys there.